in my multiple years of experience of working with Power BI, especially with DAX, I have made countless mistakes. And all of these mistakes that I have made, I'm gonna distill them into five main mistakes that I don't want you to make as you progress your learning journey into 2025. What are these five mistakes? Let's find out. And of course, there are solutions as well. Mistake number one, measures must return scalar values. What do I mean by that? Please take a look. A lot of people are going to go ahead and write some measure. So let me just go ahead and open up the data tab. In the sales table, let me just go ahead and write a measure. And the measure that I'm trying to write is nothing but how many transactions in my sales table, they belong to a certain category of the channel. So I'll say that my affiliate transactions, that's the count that I would want to make. I'm gonna to start to write a measure. And my measure is going to be a very simple filter function. So I'll say, hey, I would like to filter my sales table where the condition of the filter is the channel should equal to be affiliate. So I will just write affiliate and therefore I will just close the bracket in the end. Now, if you just take a look at this particular formula that I have, there is nothing wrong with the formula. The only problem being that this filter function returns you a table instead. And if you happen to commit on this, creating a measure, this is going to return you an error. Now, obviously in Power BI, errors are not very helpful and they're not going to point you into a direction where you can take corrective action. And the corrective action for this particular error is that measures should and must return single or scalar value outputs. The filter function returns a table and the table will have many rows and many columns. Therefore, this cannot be an output of a measure. In order for me to be able to get to this output, what I can do is once I have made a table that is only taking a look at affiliate transactions, I have to then also wrap this around into a function that is going to convert that table into a single number and that could be count rows. So if you take a look at count rows function, it accepts a table, filter function returns a table and I can now close the bracket and this is just going to simply count the number of rows in that particular table. And if I drag this into my visual right here and convert that into a card, this now seems to work just all right. Now the question is, how are you going to find out that what measure is going to work and what measure isn't going to work? The solution to that is very, very simple. What you can do is while writing a calculation, whatever measure you're writing, you can take a look at the IntelliSense and the suggestions of that measure. So for instance, if I just maybe go ahead and take a look at the explanation of the filter function, you're gonna see that if I just take a look at the IntelliSense right here, it's gonna say that the filter function returns a table and not a single value. And this should be a red flag that I cannot use any function, no matter just the filter function as a measure function without even summarizing that. So that should be your check to make sure that your measures are giving you a single value output and not tables. Quick interruption in the video in case you're liking the video so far and you're wondering that how can I learn these skills of writing good DAX, good data modeling, the M language behind Power Query and all of the nuances of Power BI that makes it work. I have brilliant courses on Power BI, especially the Power Query part the DAX part, data modeling part, and the M language part. In the courses, I take you from a beginner level and take you to more advanced concepts. Try to explain you the logic of how things are working so that you feel confident in applying the learnings to even on your own data sets. Hundreds and hundreds of students have joined my courses and they have benefited a lot. In case you're interested, the link for the courses is going to be down in the description of the video. Let's get back to the video. The second most common mistake that a lot of people make is that they believe that measure is a row of a table. Let me show you what do I mean by that. Now let's just say that I am working in my sales table in Power BI and perhaps I want to create a calculated column. Although it's not a preferred practice, but hey, we're learning, let's just create a calculated column. And in that calculated column, I would like to check that how many transactions are affiliate transactions, which are right here, and how many of them are non-affiliate transactions. So to do that, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna make a new column. And I will start to write a very simple condition, which is affiliate or not. And to do that, I'm gonna write a very simple if function. And in the if function, I can call out my channel column and mark that as affiliate. And if they are affiliate, I wanna write one. If they are not, then I wanna write zero close on the bracket and press enter. And obviously I was able to write the column calculation. Now by default, by the virtue that you have probably moved from Excel to Power BI, and this table environment pretty much looks like Excel. So creating a column and then writing calculations, that's what we have been doing for ages in Excel. Now the problem is that once you start to create a measure, so right click on the sales table, make a new measure, this measure that you have created, which is right here up on the top, is not 
the row of the table. And if you happen to replicate the same behavior, which is affiliate or not, in this measure, you would not be able to write the if statement. Take a look. So if I just go right here and if I happen to write the if, and if I try to pick up the channel, I'm just not able to pick up the channel. So I write the table name, I put the square bracket, I write channel, and I'm not able to select that channel right here. What is the reason for this? By default, when you create a measure, a measure does not mean that you have the access to every single row of the table. That's how measures work. To be able to get the access to the rows of the table, you need to work with something called as iterator functions that give you the ability to pick up a table and then access every single row of it. So if I were to go ahead and write something like, hey, sumx, which happens to be an iterator function, I'll say, I wanna step inside every single row of the table. And once you have used the sumx function, which is like a row by row calculation, then in the expression part of the formula, you get the access to the row of the table. And now I would be able to write that if condition that I was wanting to write, which is where I was trying to find out that if the channel is equals to affiliate or not. Spelling is wrong, but that is all right. So remember, if you want to get access to the row of the table, especially when you're creating a measure, it is not a row of the table by default. In order to get the access to the row of the table, you have to work with some kind of iterator function and then get the access to the row of the table. But by default, a measure is not the row of the table. A lot of times your visuals are going to be returning you wrong or not really wanted answers because you have used the wrong column as a filter. Let me explain to you what do I mean by that. So here I have the year as a filter or as in the table and I can have two years, 2011 and 2012. That's what my data is. Is, and I just want to count the number of days in that particular year, which is a very standard calculation. Count the number of days in your date or calendar table, and that should just work well. I'm going to go over to my calendar table and make a new measure, and I'm going to call this as days in year, right? And I'm going to write a very simple function, which is the count the number of rows in my calendar table or my date table, commit on this formula. And as soon as I drag this calculation to my pivot table, I do not get the answer as expected. I should have gotten 365 or 366 in case that's a leap year, but hey, it's nowhere actually close to that. So why am I getting the wrong answer? Generally, what people are going to do is they're gonna stare at the visual, they're gonna stare at their DAX and try to do something. But one thing that a lot of people forget is also you should always check that where the column in the concerned calculation is dragged from. So if you take a look at this year column that I have it, I don't have it from the calendar table instead, but I have it somewhere in the sales table that I just created as a pseudo year calculation or a calculated column. Now the problem is that if I happen to drag the year column from the sales table right here and try to build a calculation on the calendar table right here, obviously a reverse filter from the sales table to the products to the calendar table is not going to work because the filter direction is from one side to the many side and not the other way around. Therefore, any filter from this table will not be able to filter the calendar table. That's by default. Now that I know that the year column was dragged incorrectly, what I can simply do is just go back to my visual and go ahead and drop the year column from here instead and remove that uh, year column from the sales table. And now if I happen to drag my years calculation or my days calculation, this gives me the right answer as expected. So the big learning here is that you can check your DAX, of course, you can check your visuals, of course, but do not forget to take a look at where the filters or the columns are being dragged from and are they from the right tables or not. This is going to save you so much effort and time in debugging your DAX. Mistake number four, missing the sorting columns while ignoring filters in the calculate function or howsoever. Now take a look at this visual that I'm working with and I'll help you understand better. So I have year and the month and I have of course the sales of the month right here but I want to find the monthly contribution which simply means that I want to divide two numbers. I want to divide the monthly sales of every single month by the total of the year and if I get these two calculations right the numerator and the denominator I am going to get to the right answer. So in order for me to do that calculation, I wanna ignore the filter for the months. I wanna ignore this particular filter and I wanna just apply one filter, which is the filter for the year and ignore the filter for the month. If I'm able to do that, then I will get to this particular number. And if I'm able to get to the totals number, then I can do the simple divide calculation. Let's just see the mistake that I'm gonna make. So I'm gonna right click and say new measure. 
and I'm going to call this measure as my contribution. Now, let's just find the total first. So I'm going to go ahead and start to ignore the filter for the month. And how do I do that? I'm going to write a very simple calculate statement. And I'll say, hey, I'm trying to calculate my total sales, of course. And I would like to remove the filter or ignore the filter using the remove filters function. You can also use the all function, but hey, I'm just using remove filters. So I would like to remove the filter from the month. I close the bracket. I close the bracket, press enter. Now, once I drag this calculation off to my visual, I'm expecting to see 18,327 in all the rows of the visual right here. Let's just do that. So contribution goes right here. And I do not see 18,327 in all the rows. Why? Because in the calendar table, we have made sure that the month column, which is right here, is sorted by the month index column. That means that if you are trying to remove the filters from the month column, we also have to remove the subsequent filters from the month index column. Unless you take both of these calculations into consideration in your calculate function, this formula is not going to work. So let's just go ahead and revise our calculation. I'm going to go back to my measure and I'll say not only do I want to remove the filter from the month, but I also want to remove the filter from the index column on which the sorting has been applied. So I press enter and you're now going to see that it now gives us the expected number 18327 all across the months for 2011. Now that I have the right answer, I can sure enough do the divide. I want to divide my total sales calculation with the denominator, which is the total of the entire year. And that should give me the percentage contribution. Of course, I can convert it to a percentage and that fixes another grave mistake that a lot of people make. Finally, the last and the biggest mistake that a lot of people believe it to be true, but it's actually not true. And then once they take a look at it, their mind goes bonkers. Here is what I'm trying to say. Totals are not really the totals in Power BI. Take a look at this visual that I have made, which is where I have the year, I have the month, and I have what is the sales of one best-selling day. So in the month of Jan, the best-selling day produced a sales of $192, so on and so forth. And here I have the sales of all the best-selling days, and perhaps at the total level, I don't really want to find out the sales of the best-selling day of the entire year, but I want to find out the total of all of these numbers. That means 192 plus 192 approximately, plus this, plus this, so on and so forth. That doesn't obviously give me 407 because 407 is the sales of the best selling day of the entire year. I rather want to sum all of these numbers. How do I solve this particular problem? Now in Power BI, every single cell that is right here is calculated as per the filter context. So here we have two filter contexts, year and the month, and therefore it actually gives you the number for that particular month. And here the filter context is nothing but the year only, and therefore it gives you the max best-selling day value for the entire year. So we want to change this particular thing. And I'm going to give you a very fast way to solve this problem. What you need to do in order to fix your total is artificially create the table that you are seeing but Power BI is not seeing. So if you take a look at this particular table, in this particular table, we have two dimensions. We have the year dimension and the month dimension. And I would want to create a table like this in the mind of Power BI so that Power BI is also taking a look at this table. However, at the moment, Power BI is taking a look at our entire sales table, which is right here and not this visual table that we have created. So my first job is going to be to create this table. And then once I have this table, I will just ask Power BI, hey, why don't you sum all of these values up? And that is going to actually form the correct total. Let's just see how can we do that. I'm going to go over to the DAX query view. And in the query view, I'm going to start to write uh, like a bit of formulas here to be able to make that table. Since we are creating a table, the query view is the perfect place to create tables in Power BI. So if you take a look at the visual once again, we have the year and the month. And against the year and the month, we have max day sales. So let's just do that. I'm going to go ahead and uh, use the summarize function. So I'm, I want to summarize my sales table. And the sales table need to be summarized by the calendar year and the calendar month. And I'm going to close the bracket and let's just run the query. And of course, we have year and the month. And against that, I would want to have my uh, max day sales. So I'm going to add a column to this particular table. So I'll say I want to add a column to this two columnar table. The column that I want to add is the max column. And the formula to do that is nothing but my max day sales. I'm going to close on the bracket and click on run. And sure enough, I get the year, the month, and the max day sales. Now, this is the table that I want to feed in my formula. And I want to say that here is a table that I have created. I want you to step inside every single row of the table and keep picking the max column values and add them up 
while you're at the total level calculation. So let me just copy this particular uh, table that I have created, control C on that. And I'm gonna make a new measure and I'm gonna say that my max day sales modified and I am going to write that particular uh, measure right here. Now obviously the add columns function returns a table and a measure cannot accept a table. Therefore I have to wrap this function around in the sumx function and I'm going to step inside every single row of the table and I will say something hey why don't you just sum the max column value that I have created. And if I now press enter and I drag this measure into my pivot table Sure enough, the individual months are going to give me the same answer because we have two filter context, Jan and year, but at the total level, it is now seeing the table which is right here and it has gone through every single row of this particular table, summed up the value and placed it right here and that's how you generally fix totals. In case you would want to learn more about how to fix totals properly and take a look at a couple of more examples, I've got another video for you to watch next. I'll see you in that video.